Welcome to everybody online. Nice to see you this morning. And we're going to start off with Mr. David Reese, who is our ESL director. And he is going to have some words to say and people to introduce. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm, my name is David Reese. I'm the ESL director here, and I'm so happy to invite you all and welcome you to the um, Adult ESL 2021 hybrid, as you can see from the online participation um, Thanksgiving ESL celebration this year. And I just want to say that today is one of those artifacts of people having perseverance and understanding of community and appreciative of the diversity that we live here in Farmington and we got a chance to explore every day. We truly appreciate your participation, and I want to start off my special welcomes to Mrs. Vicki Barnett, who is our Farmington Hills Mayor. Would you like to come up and say a few words? First, I apologize for the two signs that are out there. My team forgot to pick them up after the election. <laughs> so I will fetch them and go with them. I'm really excited to be here. Um, my husband is a English teacher for Oakland Literacy Council, and one of your students is one of his students, and that's um, Patrizia from Italy. So I came here to see what all of you guys do and where you're from and how you're experiencing um, your move to the United States and how things are going and to learn more about your cultures. The diverse communities that we live in um, make this particular event very special because not only do we know that we live in a diverse community, but it brings it very personalized down to the individual level so that we can all really learn from one another. And since we are a lifelong learning community, I am so grateful to have been invited. Thank you very much. We do have several members from the Farmington Hill School Board that will be participating in our event today, but they're currently not here, but we do have one that is currently here, and if you wouldn't mind, would you please stand? Ms. Claudia Hendricks. Thank you so much for your participation. We also have members from the Farmington Public Schools Library. Would you please stand? Thank you for supporting our program. We truly appreciate it. And we have members from our ESL program. Would you please stand for the Farmington Public Schools? Ms. Minoska, Mrs. LV. And then also two members from our central office cabinet, which unfortunately couldn't be here at this time because we're currently having a meeting, but several will come back in later on today. But I do have Ms. Diane Bauman here representing central office. Now, this year, as you know, transitioning from a um, pandemic and still going through our journey, we had several members of our team that stepped up, and I have some special recognitions that I would like to start off with Mr. Patrick Brown, who's re representing from McKay, and McKay stands for Michigan Adult Education and Alternative, did I say that right? Michigan, Michigan Association for Community and Adult Education. There we go. All right, I have Mrs. Pa Mr. Patrick Brown. Close. Thank you, David. Education acronyms are always uh, a joy and delight, right? Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I'm Patrick Brown, Director of McKay, and we are the professional organization for adult, alternative, community education, and integrated education and training in the state of Michigan. So we um, represent uh, the 130 different providers that are similar programs to Farmington, and David and Suzanne and the entire staff our members of our association have been for a long time. And Farmington has such an important history with supporting English as a second language learners. You should know that Farmington in the last five years has been in the top 25% of programs all across the state. So there's a strong program here and you do wonderful work in supporting uh, new arrivals coming into our country, but also people that are just looking to improve their English uh, literacy and English language skills. So I have the distinct honor of being here this morning to present an award. Um, in addition to the wonderful students that you have, you also have a wonderful staff, and I'm sure that you're 
quite aware of that. And um, our association gives out annual awards every year in our annual conference. This year it was virtual, as many events are. But we still wanted to honor um, and share the important work um, that many of our professional staff members are doing. And so I'm here to present the McKay 2021 Support Staff Award to Luciana Maida. Luciana <laughs> was awarded. Yes, come forward, Luciana. Luciana was uh, nominated by uh, Suzanne, so thank you Suzanne for that wonderful nomination. And Luciana was really recognized for her contributions here during the daytime as a teacher assistant. I know that you started your English language journey here at Farmington and then now are helping other learners in the classroom by um, being a teacher assistant and helping them. And Suzanne really mentioned uh, the hard work and dedication that you have in wanting to give back to your community. And I just think that that's, you're doing that in such a wonderful way and you're such a wonderful example. So I am here to say, here is your award. And so on behalf of McKay, all of our members, three, 400 members across the state of Michigan, congratulations, Luciana. And here is the two, 2021 Support Staff Award. Congratulations. And that is Luciana's to keep, and she can share it uh, wherever she goes. So it's a badge of honor. So congratulations and a job well done. Thanks, Luciana. Next, and I will get this one right, we have Karen Govan from Oakland County Community and Adult Education, which is okay. Did I pronounce that one correct? <laughs> Close enough? <laughs> so many acronyms. Good morning. I'm very honored to be here and so excited. This really brings back memories for me. I used to run an ESL program in the Lansing area and just coming here and seeing this is something similar we used to do and it just brings back great memories and it's just wonderful to see the students participating and the staff. And so I'm here and I'm honored to present the OK Award for the Support Person of the Year, Lynn Opasic. And what she did, thank you for David uh, um, presenting it and uh, nominating her was that, you know, during this whole pandemic, she was uh, able to uh, keep the program going. She was able to learn CASAS online, which is very hard. Uh, and she was able to keep, keep the program and maintain the program. And so how wonderful. And I really appreciate this. And, and it's so important that we have, you know, ESL programs and we continue the great work for adult education. So on behalf of OK, I present to you the support person of the year. Beautiful plaque. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. So she can put that in her office. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, with such a talented team, I know that our, our COVID journey will not cripple the program and we will continue to be stronger and move faster as we return to our normalcy here and continue the large numbers that we normally would have in our ESL program. I know that a lot of us missed um, the total experience because we normally would have food from each of the different cultures and I know that that was something that we had to give up and unfortunately supplement, but we're sure that hearing your stories and still getting the information that you're gonna to share today is gonna to be so meaningful to us and we truly appreciate it. Today's event is an artifact that makes Farmington Public Schools so special. Our community diversity is unmatched by any other Oakland County community. We also appreciate the fact that you have the courage to share your culture and your experience with us here at Farmington Public Schools. Also, as you can see from the confidence on your face, we know that that came from an outstanding team. So at this time, and I don't want to embarrass you, but can you please stand? I want to acknowledge our teachers. Can I have Ms. Stephanie McMasters? Want to come up? <laughs> Stephanie, want to come up? Want to come up? And just, just remain standing up front, please. Okay. And can I have Mrs. Suzanne Nicholson? Okay. 
and I wanted them to come up and stand next to me because I just wanted to share the fact that we can't do this without them. And I mean, this year you got to think about what had to happen. We had to learn through technology, and we were still working on our own, learning new languages, and then we had to learn the world of cyberspace and online testing. This was a tremendous feat, and I truly appreciate their support and their leadership. I mean, this event today, I mean, it gives me chills just thinking about how we're all here. I know we have our mask on, which I will once I'm not six feet away from you. And, um, <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, ladies, and we truly appreciate what you do. Okay? Thank you. Oh, and Pat, I have a bouquet for you. I apologize, I forgot, and I said it in my opening words. This is a hybrid participation. So we have Mrs. Davis. Can you raise your, wave your hand, Ms. Davis? There she is. She's in the middle of the screen in the Hollywood Squares. So, and you know what? This is one of the artifacts. Not everything was bad during our transition and during our, our pandemic experience. You can have a seat, ladies. Not everything was bad. Um, we learn how to stretch ourselves and do things differently and become more efficient. And Mrs. Davis is an artifact of that. She has over 30 students that we have participating online, and we truly appreciate their leadership and having the courage to do so. And today you'll see that you'll have online presentations, and then you'll have face-to-face -face presentations that we're accustomed to having every year. So once again, thank you, and we truly appreciate your active participation, and we look forward to the experience of your culture and understanding more about you. Thank you. Okay, so to get to the heart of why we're all here is to celebrate all of the cultures that come through Farmington. If you look at the back of your program, you will notice a picture of all of the flags that are hanging around the gym. And these are all of the programs that have come through our, pro our Farmington Adult ESL program since 2016 when we started keeping track. So right now we have about 52 countries that have come through and it's amazing to know that we are able to touch that many corners of the world on all five continents. So we're going to open today with North America. So if our North American students and South America um, could line up. And then we're going to go through Europe and... <laughs> I forgot which the next one is. Uh, then we're gonna go through Europe and Africa and then into Asia. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariana Alcaraz, and I was born in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Mexico is located on the North American continent. In Mexico, we have a unique form of transportation called the Chihuahua Pacifico train, which is also known as the Chepe train. Do the pronunciation in Spanish of the train names first letters, Chipi. The train trip begins in Chihuahua City, paces through various destinations, and ends in Los Mochis on the Pacific Ocean coast. The train travels 418 miles in 16 hours. At present, it is the only train in all of Mexico that transports tourist passengers. During the trip, you can relax while seeing the natural landscapes, sleep, and enjoy a drink and, and delicious Mexican food. It is recommended 
to stop for a moment at each station or to stay at a destination. One of the foods served on the train is enmoladas. It is shared chicken wrapped in a fried tortilla and covered in mole, which is a sauce of various chiles, chocolate, garlic, onion, and tomato. When you visit Mexico, please give yourself the opportunity to travel on the Chihuahua Pacifico train. You will really enjoy it. Thanks. Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Norma from Colima, Mexico. Which is located on the southeast coast of Mexico, near the volcano or fire. Colima has the largest handicraft in the world called La Petatera. It's a monumental bullring made with organic materials such as wooden sticks ropes made from vegetal fibers and petates, which are mats woven from dried palm leaves. The bullring is completely handmade and is the only one of its kind in the world. It also has the largest arena measuring 196.5 feet in diameter and six feet in height. It takes more than 100 people, one month to assemble it, one month to remove it. And it sits about 7,000 spectators. This construction is made in honor of San Felipe de Jesus during February. Also in February, you can enjoy of bullfighting, music concerts, and a great diversity of traditional food, 
such as pozole. Pozole is one of the most traditional dishes especially made to celebrate in gatherings and during national holidays. Pozole consists of a broth made from corn grains to which, depending on the region of Mexico, pork, beef, or chicken is added as a secondary ingredient. It is served with onion, lettuce, radish, lemon, and hot chili. I hope you can visit Colima, Mexico, and enjoy la petatera and the pozole. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dalia Galdian. I'm from Mexico, which is located in North America. Mexico is a land of many indigenous cultures and has been a multicultural country with around 68 different cultures over the last 5,000 years. This variety of cultures is still present today throughout every Mexican state. You can see a mix of some of the more developed and complex cultures like the Olmecas, Mayas, Aztecas, and Toltecas, along with many more. Mexico honors them by preserving their architecture, clothing, traditions, beliefs, and languages. The main language we speak in our country is Spanish, but, but we have also over 100 different native languages across the country. This cultural diversity is also reflected in our delicious food, our ancestors left us a legacy of a great variety of food dishes, including corn tortillas, which are made from nixtamal. The nixtamal is corn previously boiled in salty water, then is ground to make a dough, and finally rolled out and toasted on a comal, it's like a griddle. Uh, the tortillas are consumed in all Mexican homes, either as a side dish or as a main ingredient, and used in dishes like enchiladas, enmoladas, tacos, and more. When you visit Mexico, we invite you to enjoy our tortillas and explore the wealth of history we continue to use in our daily lives. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Laura. Um, I'm from Querétaro, a state located in the middle of Mexico, in North America. Uh, there are many special things about Querétaro, uh, including Lele. Lele is a hand, handmade doll that represents the traditions, customs, and roots of the native people of Querétaro. Uh, she is from a little town uh, called Amealco uh, and was created by Otomi people. In the Otomi language, her name means bebe or baby in English. Lele became a cultural heritage ambassador of Querétaro and has traveled around the world to promote the development of Mexico. Uh, her tour has stopped in major uh, cities, including Toronto, London, Madrid, Shanghai, Sydney, Moscow, LA, and Chicago. And speaking about things uh, be found in places around the world, the prickled pear uh, fruit can be found from Canada to the United States to Mexico. Uh, however, in Mexico, we call tuna. Tuna is the fruit of a cactus with a deep uh, red, green, or orange uh, shell, as well as a sweetie juicy inside. It's a native to the Western Hemisphere, particularly in Latin America, but its more popular usage is in Mexico. Tuna is an antioxidant uh, superfood high in fiber, minerals, vitamins, and other nutrients 
that reduce the risk of cancer, but cholesterol, hyperglycemia, hypertension, depression, and diabetes. And its flavor is delicious. So if you get a chance to visit Querétaro to see Lele, make sure to try our sweet Mexican tuna. Hi, um, my name is Nelly. I am from Mexico, which is located in North America continent. Mm, did you know that in Mexico, creating monsters is a new art form? Alebrijes are considered one of the most important and popular handcraft arts in Mexico. The creator of Alebrijes was the artist Pedro Linares López, who at the, at the age of 30 became seriously sick and wake up remember dreams about fantastic and um, colorful creatures that cared for him and kept him company while she was unconscious and in danger of dying. Once recovered, Pedro used mache paper and paints to recreate these fantastic creatures. These creations look like monsters, but for Pedro, they really were spiritual guides or guardians. Alebrijes can be as small as one inch or up to seven feet tall. They come in all shapes, colors and patterns, and also you can uh, and also you can get one with mixed animals. If you want to see a huge exhibition of giant alebrijes, come visit Mexico City in October and welcome Paseo de la Reforma Avenue. While walking and looking at the alebrijes, you may come across a famous and delicious Mexican street snack called Esquites. The main ingredients are corn kernels, which are served in a cup with different toppings, like mayonnaise or sour cream, shredded cheese, lime and chili pepper powder, spicy or not spicy. There are many recipes for esquites. One of the most simple is um, cook the corn kernels with water, salt, garlic, onion, and epazote. Epazote is a French herb. Um, take them out of the water, hot water and fry them for a few minutes in butter. And finally, serve them in a cup with assorted toppings. So, whether you love monster or just just one, uh, or you just love trying with a new core dishes, come visit Mexico City in the fall for a new treat. Thank you. Hi. My name is Erika Jaimes. I was born in Puebla, Mexico. Mexico is located on the continent of North America. Puebla is one of the 32 stay in Mexico. 22 stay in Mexico. Mexico has amazing tourism. Mexico is excellent for tourists that the land in action cultures. They are on studying scenic view. When combined nature and wildlife, which sports, ecotourism is created. The state of Puebla has a wide variety of food. Chiles en Nogada is a Mexican sazonal discreted in Puebla, which can be found on, only in the months of August. I hope you can visit Mexico, go to Puebla, and enjoy a Chile en Nogada. Oh my God. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ana. Ana Bustos, I born in Mexico. Mexico is location in the continent of North America. Mexico has amazing place with beach. In the state of Quintana Roo, less than 20 kilometers of the of nine mil from Cancun. Cozumel is the second most popular incident in the Mexico. The Island has been you can soon answer else boat in the of the water. 
Set what's beautiful on the four blues water, water the Pacific Oceanic on the second of Cozumel is Cabo San Lucas Island. My country also was great food. Pambaso is delicious food eat as September 16 when the celebration Mexican Independence Day. Pambaso eat a to make. I hope you can visit Mexico and its different state, east and beach, and engorged and swim food. Good morning. My name is Maria Guevara. I was born in Mexico. Mexico is located on the continent of North America. Mexico has amazing landscapes of water, sand, and trees. There are beautiful beaches on all of its coasts from the Pacific to the Atlantic and the Caribbean. And large deserts such as the states of Sonora, Chihuahua, and Durango. And it has dense forests like Toluca, Michoacán, and Pinal de Amoles, Querétaro. Mexico also has great food. The Rosca de Reyes, or King's Reed, is a sweet bread, shaped like a reed with a baby figurine biker inside of it. You are considered lucky if you find the baby Jesus figurine in your slice of the bread. With Rosca de Reyes, mainly on January 5, when the day of the kings is celebrated, the flavors vary since some people Fill their bread with cream, cheese, or sugar. Jam, a trick, caramel, sauce, colored cajeta, chocolate, or red fruit. I hope you can visit Mexico and you enjoy some of beautiful scenery and delicious Rosca de Reyes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Monica Garcia. Um, my country is Mexico. Mexico is located in the continent of North America. Um, here are three fantastic beaches uh, when you go to visit Mexico. The first is uh, located in the state of Jalisco. Uh, you will find the Pacific Ocean. It's a beautiful place to snorkel and see exotic fishes. In Jalisco, you must try the tortas ahogadas. It's bread with pork meat with very delicious sauce and spicy. <laughs> The second beach is considered the capital of the surfing. It's located in the state of Oaxaca. In Oaxaca, you can try the tlayudas. It's a very option for uh, if you are a vegetarian. And finally, the most curious uh, beaches because it's pink. It's for the minerals there are in the beach. In this beach, you can see the flamingos. Um, uh, when you visit uh, Yucatan, um, you can try the cochinita pibil. It's very delicious. I hope you visit Mexico and you try the food and the visit the, uh, the different states. Thank you. Um, good morning. I'm reading this speech on behalf of our friend Patricia, who is not able to come today. My name is Patricia. I'm Italian, and I'm going to share with you my home city of Turin. Turin is located in the northwest, northwest of Italy in the Piedmont region. 
It was the first capital of Italy, and in 2006, Turin hosted the 20th Olympic Winter Games. In this old city, the ruins date back to Roman times. The royal, the royal residences, the beautiful city squares, which are considered the living rooms of the city, and the elegant historic cafes allow you to breathe in its stately past. This city is full of museums, including the Egyptian Museum, the National Cinema Museum, and the, and the National Automobile Museum. This city is also rich in large parks, sporting events, and contemporary works. Turin is also famous for its 11 miles of arch-covered walkways called arcades. Here, you can find antique shops, shops of great brands like Made in Italy, as well as historical coffee shops where you can enjoy sweets and an excellent aperitif. You can taste the city's rich culture through the highest quality of foods, from the typical agnolotti del plin, stuffed pasta that are usually served with raw sauce and accompanied by an excellent locally produced glass of red Barolo wine. To the, to the city exclusive pasticcini dessert, accompanied by a glass of a typical sweet Piedmontese wine called Barachepo. Turin has something for everyone to enjoy. Come discover Turin, where, where you will be treated as more than a tourist. You will be treated as a guest. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rodina. I was born in Albania. Albania is located on the continent of Europe. I would like to invite you to some of Albania's sightseeing attractions. Welcome to Albania. Every year, many people go to the beautiful beach on the Lonian Sea for their summer vacation. You can visit the Historian Museum of Juan Ponce in Girocastra. The traditional Albanian works of art can be seen in the city of Cruya. My country also has great fruit. We eat pie almost every day. It is a kind of pie with a flaky crust and stuffed with meat, cheese, or spinach. This pie takes two hours to prepare. I hope you can visit Albania and enjoy some delicious food. My name is Regina, and I am from Russia. Did you know that Russia is the biggest country in the world? Here are some interesting facts about my country. Russia sits on two continents of Eastern Europe and Northern Asia. Sorry. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are 11 time zones from west to east. When it is 2 p.m. in Kaliningrad to the west, it is midnight in Kamchatka in the east. It takes two weeks to travel the almost 6,000 miles between the capital of Moscow to the east coast on the Trans-Siberian Express train. As part of its landmass, Russia has 13 seas and part of the oceans, the Arctic and Pacific. In fact, Russia is so large that it 
is only two and a half miles from the US in the Diomed Islands, located in the middle of the Bering Strait between Alaska and Siberia. Little Diomed Island is a part of the US and Big Diomed Island is a part of Russia. However, for only being a short distance from each other, they are 21 hours apart due to the international date line that runs between them. The islands are sometimes called Tomorrow Island and Yesterday Island because Big Diamond is almost a full day ahead of Little Diamond. Russia is the home for, ma for many nationalities always their own traditions, but eating traditional food is the one thing that united all of the people in Russia. One very common dish called piroshki is a small baked or fried pies with a variety of stuffings. Stuffings can be very different, such as fruits and berries, vegetables, jam, meat or fish, baked or rice, and cheese or eggs. Piroshki is a very popular snack. You can buy this in any supermarket or bakery, and many people bake this at home. I hope you get a chance to explore Russia and try our popular piroshki. Thank you for your attention and happy Thanksgiving Day. Спасибо. My name is Taya Mikadze. I was born in Georgia. Um, Georgia is located on the um, continent Asia, the Europe. Um, Georgia has amazing resort and nature. Um, Georgia is a country of agriculture. Uh, Georgia is a country of wine. Uh, Georgia has beautiful um, traditional dance. Um, my country also has great food. Mm, um, is uh, delicious food service New Year days day. Satsivi mm, uh, uh, takes and also uh, time to make in uh, three hours. Uh, I have with you can visit Georgia and enjoy uh, some satsivi, all delicious food. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vidad. I was born in Morocco. Morocco is in the west corner of North Africa. The cultural signature of Morocco is in their clothes, which tend to be elaborate, colorful, or they are unique among the rest of the continent of Africa, and still are a part of living tradition of the country today. Both genders wear the jillaba, which consists of long flowing robes, with hoods or hat scarves, and traditional slippers. All are made of harmonious colors and luxurious fabric, and tailored elegantly. The kaftan is a famous dress worn worldwide by women for special occasions, such as wedding or engagement parties. It can be from various fabrics, such as silk or velvet. And the belt is made of gold, or silver and decorated with rubi rubies and emeralds. Citizens of the desert wear a different style of clothes, clothes melhfa. It is a piece of large fabric with bright colors, about 13 feet long, which wraps around the body to keep it protected from the heat. The ethnic group called Barber wears Barber clothes with special accessories, although they are fascinated with red and white color. Food in Morocco is tasty, uh, tasty, nutritional, and appeals to a variety of tastes. The main dish is couscous, and the Morocco family eat the dish on Friday of every week. It must be 
uh, it must be to be presented in a special clay pot to keep the couscous hot. The couscous cons consists of a lot of vegetables, tasty, easy to make, and can be social bond for Morocco people. If you spend your Christmas holiday in Morocco, I am sure when you came back, you will have great memories. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Reem Haddad, and I was born in Iraq. Iraq is located on the continent of Asia. In every life, in every day life in Iraq, we focus on education, our 18 state, and curiously, and food, among other things. First, to be able to go about our daily life. Education is very important as school teaches us how to read, write, and do math. The Arabic alphabet has 28 letters and we read and write from right to left. Second, the climate is different in each region of Iraq. Northern Iraq has similar weather to Michigan. Middle Iraq feels like uh, the temperature in, Il in California, and Southern Iraq is hot like Arizona. Third, the Iraq currently is called dinar. If you have 1,400 Iraqi dinars, you can shop at a store that has similar prices to a dollar tree and buy just one item. And lastly, Iraq has many kinds of food, foods. Kubba is a famous Iraqi food made up of minced meat, burgul, and spices. Kubba is hard to make because the shell should be thin and then, but is carefully in the fr fryer so it does not break. However, it tastes great. My family and I eat kubba from lunch on Sunday. I hope you can visit the country of Iraq and enjoy some kubba. While interacting with us, we live, live our lives each day. Thank you. Good morning. My name is uh, my name is Haral Husseini. I was born in Iraq. Iraq is located on the continent of Asia. There are many religions in Iraq. The Muslim religion is in Iraq. There, uh, these are the Muslim shares in Baghdad, Karbala, and Najaf, uh, which are beliefs of the religious uh, terrorism for different uh, nationalities. The, uh, the Christian religion is in Iraq. This, uh, this is one of the uh, churches in Mosul, and uh, it, uh, its name is the Holy, uh, Holy Heart. The Mandan and Sabian uh, are in Iraq. This is one of the, their picture uh, while they are performing their uh, retailers of worship. We have many types of food, the most famous of which uh, is the dolma. Dolma is eaten uh, at uh, lunch or dinner and uh, when with the friend. Dolma consists of uh, stuffing, stuffing uh, of uh, uh, minced beef, rice, a little onion, uh, garlic, uh, some vegetables, spice, salad, and lemon, and the stuffed uh, within uh, the grapes, leaves, onion, and uh, other vegetables. I hope you can uh, visit, in, uh, visit Iraq and enjoy some dalma. Thank you.
Yeah, I think. Hello everyone, I am Sara from Pakistan. Pakistan is in Southern Asia, bordering India, China, Afghanistan and Iran. Urdu is the main language. Urdu is the main language spoken here along with 80 other languages, which makes for an interesting time at our weddings. Pakistanis love weddings and there are usually three main events, but sometimes we have three, uh, we have up to six to eight events. The first event is the pre-wedding festivities, which usually begin with the Mehndi meaning Hina in Urdu. On this day, girls apply Hina on their hands in elaborate designs. Mehndi decors and clothing are very colorful. The groom and bride's friend perform dances and there is music and a lot of dancing by the grooms and guests, especially Bhangra dancing to the beat of the dhol drums. The second event is the Barat, take place on the wedding day. At this event, the bride usually wears a heavy red traditional dress and gold jewelry. The groom usually wears a traditional coat and headdress. At the Barat, a religious ceremony called the Nikah is done where the couple sign a documents and a prayer is said. The Walima is the third main event and is the event, event for the groom side. The bride usually wears a modern or light colored traditional dress and gold jewelry gifted by the groom's family, while the grooms wear a tuxedo. Food is the heart of the Pakistani's wedding, and there is a very lavish feast. We serve many dishes, the main being mutton biryani and lots of barbecue. Dessert can be very depending on the season. For example, summer weddings usually serve some form of chilled mango, such as mango souffle or mango ice cream. I hope one day all of you can visit Pakistan and try some amazing Pakistani mangoes. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Be thankful. Hello everybody, Namaste. I am Ojeshwini. I am from India, which is located in the South Asia. I am sharing about our Holi festival. Holi is, known, is also known as Festival of Colors. Holi is celebrated on the day of full moon in the month of March, at night a bonfire called Holi Kadahan. People will wish each other help Holi put dry colors, powders, gulal on each other's faces. People also splash colored water on each other with water guns. The story of Holi festival tells our a powerful king named as Hol Hirana Kashyap, who wanted everybody in his kingdom to worship like a god. But his own son Prahalad refused to become a worship for Lord Vishnu. So the king tried many times to kill his son, but unsuccessfully. So he asked his sister Holika for help, but Lord Vishnu received the boy and killed evil king and his sister. During Holi, we eat delicious sweet dishes like double kamita, which is also known as shai tukra at bread pudding. The main ingredients are bread, butter, ghee, milk, dry nuts, and sugar. If you visit India during March, I hope you learn more about the history of Holi and get a chance to eat double kamita. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving Day. Good morning, everyone. I am Darani Nadrajan, and I was born in Tamil Nadu, India. India is located in the south of Asia. 
Tamil Nadu has many hill stations, which means a town high up in the hills. One of the popular hill stations and po tourist spots is Uti. Uti is well known for its lakes, Thread Garden, Waxworld Museum, and its forts. Uti Lake is a very popular lake where tourists enjoy beautiful scenery and boating. You can even rent a swan shaped paddle boat there. The Thread Garden is an artificial garden with 100 different kinds of flowers. It was made by 50 skillful experts without needles and machines using 60 million meters or almost 190 million feet of thread and took 12 years and over 400 shades of color to complete. The Wax World Museum is 130 years old and it contains wax statues of great Eastern Indian and world leaders as well as models of Eastern Indian lifestyle. Uti also has a great variety of teas, worky biscuits and homemade chocolates are very famous in Uti. India has a variety of delicious foods. Dosa is one of the most popular breakfast foods eaten every day in India and is a rolled crepe or pancake made from rice, lentils and fenugreek seeds. When you visit India, make sure to visit the lovely hill station of Uti and enjoy our tasty foods as well. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. I was born in China. Uh, China is uh, and uh, of uh, Asian. Uh, I do a beautiful city of Liuzhou. Uh, in the season, the <laughs> And the uh, flower is yeah, beautiful uh, here. Uh, Liuzhou is uh, in the city, like, in the city, uh, city like, like Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. Uh, Liuzhou is the... Uh, Hong Chao of uh, of food. Yeah, in the great food. Yeah, long time li li chi. Uh, lo lo kwa lo kwa te. Okay. Chinese is. <laughs> yes. Get the food. Yes. <laughs> Chinese, uh, Yeah, uh, food, dumpling, uh, the pork dumpling, uh, the Finnish food in the China, uh, for the make you in the you special holiday, uh, dumpling cake. You are uh, three, three clock, uh, three hours to make. And I hope you, uh, how you uh, can meet China in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, of Liuzhou. And uh, is, uh, Wonderful food. Thank you. Well, thank you.
Hello, uh, my name is Luciana Prabandari. I'm from Indonesia, which is located in Southeast Asia. Have you ever thought about your own name? Javanese, the largest ethnic group in Indonesia, has a very different naming practice than the Americans. For one, we do not have family names, also known as last names. Many Javanese, particularly the older generation, have only one word names, such as our previous presidents, Sukarno and Suharto. My parents also have one name, Sugiarti and Muyoto. The younger generation usually has two or more words for names, like my siblings' names. As you can see, their names do not have any resemblance to my parents. As there are no set rules, parents can be really creative. Javanese names may contain the wish of the parents, so the time or circumstances around a child's birth, or indicate birth order. And if I know you're wondering how many siblings I have, well, my ever creative mother put the number and her wish in my name. Luciana is from Lucin, that's Javanese for a dozen, and Ono. Rabandari is from Probo, a beautiful Javanese goddess, and Dari. So yes, I'm child number 12, the youngest one. And no, my mom didn't really get her wish. I'm not a Javanese goddess. <laughs> Speaking of Javanese and names, uh, after a child is born, we usually celebrate it by making nasi tumpang, which is a cone-shaped turmeric rice served with an array of side dishes. This rice symbolizes happiness and hope for prosperity. Families then send the box meal version of this rice to their neighbors, along with the note of the child's full name. This is how we announce the name to the world. And what's in the name, you say? Well, for Japanese people, it can be anything but a family name. Thank you. Hi, my name is Minami from Japan. Japan is located on the continent of Asia. In Japan, a beautiful traditional clothing called a kimono is worn. It looks like a long robe overlapped in front and fastened in back with an obi or thick sash. Kimonos used to be worn on a daily basis by everyone in Japan, but nowadays they are worn only for special occasions and life events such as weddings, graduations, coming-of-age ceremonies, etc. There are several types of kimonos for women, such as frisode, tomesode, yukata, and others. A frisode is a kimono for women who aren't married, and it has long sleeves about the length of one meter or three feet. Married women wear kimonos called tomesode, a yukata is a casual kimono made from cotton. Nowadays, most people wear yukatas for summer festivals. Most kimonos are designed with something that means good fortune, like flowers, treasures, birds, and butterflies. Just like the Japanese culture of intricately designed kimonos, Japanese sweets called wagashi look delicate and beautiful. They are mainly made from plant ingredients such as beans, fruit, grains, and starch flour. Eating wagashi while wearing a kimono makes you feel elegant in Japanese style. Thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. My name is Ariko Arifuku. I was born in Japan. Japan is located on the continent of Asia. In Japan, we do unique things for the wedding ceremonies and wedding receptions. The traditional wedding places are shrines, but common places are wedding halls. Only family and relatives attend the wedding, but friends and other guests may join them at the reception. 
when attending your friend's reception. Please bring $300 for the wedding gift money, since there is no wish list like in the US. At the reception, the bride and groom give guests to their Bride and groom give gift to their guest, a gift book from which one choice is a favorite item of various product in addition to confectionery. The wedding and reception have an average of about 66 guests and cost about $36,000. Three, Japan also has delicious food. One traditional Japanese food is miso soup. Miso soup is made by boiling your favorite ingredient and seasoning them with miso. The key to cooking miso soup is to add miso and turn with a stove. I hope you can experience a Japanese wedding and enjoy some miso soup. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ayumi from Japan, and I want to share with you about our Japanese religion. In Japan, we have many kinds of religion, but I could say we are not deeply religious people. When we were born, we go to a shrine to celebrate the baby's birth. Shrines are religious institutions for the Shinto religion. Shinto finds God in nature, animals, mountains, and ancestors. When we get married, we go to church to have a wedding ceremony and swear in front of the poster for father to remain faithful to each other for life. And we celebrate Christmas too, even though we are not Christian. When someone dies, we go to a temple. Temples are religious institutions for the Buddhist religion. Shrine church and temple are different religious facilities. And while many Japanese do not believe in particular religion, they do play in several ways. Also in Japan, we have many kinds of unique foods. One of these foods is umeboshi, which is salted palms. Salted palms taste very salty and sour. When we prepare salted palms, palms are dried in the sun after being preserved in salt. To pick up palms, it takes about three to six months. Three to six months. It is said uh, salted palms will last for more than 10 years, depending on how it's sold, stored. If you come to Japan, please stop by and see our various places of worship and enjoy our one-of-kind food. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Rina. Uh, I'm from Japan. I'd like to share with you one of the most important ceremony for people in Japan called the, uh, the coming of age ceremony. The ceremony usually takes place on the second Monday of January every year. It is a Japanese national holiday called Coming of Age Day. The ceremony is held for people who turn 20 years old. It's usually held at city halls or school gyms. As a special case in Uraya City, where Tokyo Disneyland is located, the ceremony has been held at Tokyo Disneyland since 2002 every year. New adults of Uraya City are invited to Tokyo Disneyland for free admission on their coming of age day. At the ceremony, most women wear furisode, a style of kimono with long sleeves that hang down. Originally, furisode were generally worn by young unmarried women. However, the rules have changed, and increasingly, furisode are even being worn by married women. Men wear hakama or suit. Hakama is a type of traditional Japanese clothing 
Nowadays, most men wear a suit. In Japan, people are permitted to drink alcohol legally from the age of 20, and many do enjoy drinking. A lot of people also have small or big parties after their ceremonies with many dishes, including red rice. Red rice, named sekihan, is sticky rice steamed with azuki beans. Its red color is symbolic of happiness in Japan. Red rice is eaten during many celebrations, such as coming of age day, New Year's Day, and so on. The coming of age ceremony is important to celebrate and encourage young people who are aware that they have be uh, become adults and the responsibilities of adulthood. Thank you for listening. Hello. I'm Yoko, and I'm from Japan, which is located in Asia. In Japan, New Year's Day is considered to be the most important day of the year. A god called Toshigami comes to each family to bring happiness for the new year. To welcome Toshigami in the new year, families hang up a sacred straw festoon called Shimenawa at the entrance to the house. This is a sign that this house is a sacred place. Some families put kadomatsu in front of the house. Kadomatsu is a pair of auspicious pine and bamboo decorations. This is a sign so that the god can find the house without getting lost. During this time of year, we offer round two-tiered rice cakes called kagamimochi on the home order for Toshigami. On New Year's Day morning, we eat New Year's dishes called osechi and small square rice cakes with soup called zouni. The small rice cakes are made separately from those offered on the home order. We eat osechi and zoni in the hope of good health, great harvest, and longevity. On the first three days of the new year, we celebrate New Year's Day with a god, and then spend a leisurely time eating the New Year's dishes with our families. If you visit Japan on New Year's, you will see our decorations and be able to enjoy our Japanese food. Thank you. My name is Mana Sekine. I was born in Japan. Japan is located on the continent of East Asia. In Japan, we have a traditional culture of enjoying the beauty of cherry blossoms in spring called Ohanami. We can enjoy cherry blossoms from the end of March in southern Japan to early May in northern Japan. The cherry trees bloom on average for about two weeks. You can see many cherry tree in parks and riverside all over Japan. People will sit together outside under these beautiful flowers, drinking tea and alcohol, eating and enjoying themselves. My country also serves great food for events such as Ohanami. I recommended yakisoba, which is also called Japanese stir fry noodles and is a popular food, street food to eat outdoors. To make yakisoba, you begin by frying meat and vegetables together, then add noodles and sauce and fry some more. You can easily make this from pan dish at home and 
find a recipe for it on the internet. I hope you can visit Japan, experience Ohanami, and enjoy some yakisoba. Thank you. My name is Tomomi. I'm from Japan, which is located on the continent of Asia. In Japan, we love to read manga. Have you ever read manga? Japanese manga are comic books or graphic novels with illustrations drawn in a particular style, and it has a long history dating back to the 1950s and the 60s. These books are considered to be the roots of manga in Japan today. Manga stories are typically printed in black and white and read from back to front in Japanese fashion. Japanese manga is wonderful because of its story and unique drawings. A great illustrator can make each character's face express a range of emotion. It has a unique, delicate touch of complex pictures and the profound expression and the story are very popular overseas in press like in America. These, there are various genres in manga. Manga is very dear to us. We even have a dedicated cafe for reading manga. In addition, manga are often places in waiting areas such as hospital and spa. And now, the characters are even showing up on in bento boxes for children. Bento boxes come in a variety of sites and materials. They are used to carry Japanese lunches of degree packed rice and, the, and other small food but there are some bento boxes that are large enough to fit a sandwich. In Japan, people of all ages read manga and enjoy their lunch carried in bento boxes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maki. I'm from Japan. Do you know that there is a beautiful city called Kyoto, which is a historic city in Japan and is now a popular tourist destination? Kyoto was once the capital of Japan and the center of culture for over 1,000 years. The main attractions of the city are visiting shrines, temples, gardens, and the ancient Japanese architecture which can also be found at hotels and restaurants, along with many foodie destinations. The Fushimi Nori Shrine has been the most popular sightseeing spot in Kyoto, where thousands of red square archway trees attract tourists. It is a breathtaking sight. Kyoto is also known for its unique local cuisine called obanzai. Obanzai means homemade food, and although it looks simple, the recipe has been passed down for generations in every home. Seasonal Kyoto vegetables are used to create a soup, main, and side dishes, and are served with steamed rice. While these foods are being prepared, the cooks pray for their family's peace and good health throughout the cooking. The food is full of the wisdom of our predecessors, and when you eat obanzai, families remember their mother and grandmother's home cooking. I hope you can visit Kyoto and enjoy some obanzai while you visit our local tourist destinations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kako from Japan in Asia. There are many festivals in cities across Japan. 
The Nebuta Festival is held in Aomori in August. We can see many huge lantern flats that are made from wire, wood, Japanese paper, and lights. People make new flats about 16 feet high and 30 feet wide every year. They are placed on wagons that have two tires and moved by many people. The Gion Festival is held in Kyoto in July. Kyoto is the most traditional place in Japan. The Gion Festival started over 1,000 years ago to stop bad diseases. And now it is one of the top three Japanese festivals. Many Japanese frauds and people wearing traditional clothing parade through the street with traditional festival music. At the summer festival, many people wear Japanese traditional clothing called yukata, like this. Most summer festivals have fireworks, traditional dance, and food stalls. Candy apples, takoyaki, grilled corn with soy sauce, and cotton candy are very popular street foods. The candy apple is similar to the caramel apple, but instead of the caramel, the apple is glazed with a clear sweet syrup. Takoyaki is a savory snack in the shape of a round bowl made with boiled octopus and butter, topped with a special sauce, mayo, and bonito flakes. I would love to have you visit Japan someday and enjoy one of our festivals. Thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. At this time, I would like to call up our school board president, Ms. Terry Williams. Thank you. It's, oh, this is pretty neat. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to say hello and uh, welcome to everyone. I see my fellow board members here and our city uh, uh, mayor. Thank you guys for coming. This is wonderful. Um, uh, Claudia uh, Heinrich and uh, Vicki Barnett, thank you for joining us today. I have come to this celebration for the past several years. I think this is the sixth year. I'm so happy that it's continuing to go on. And during a period of time when we get to celebrate American culture and also get to learn about so many other cultures, this is wonderful. Thank you to the central office folks that have come out today and all of our staff. Thank you for, uh, for attending this event. And I hope you get a chance to uh, peruse through. These are wonderful presentations. Thank you for putting this on, Mr. Reese. You do a great job every year. Thank you for the opportunity. And also, too, I have our new leader, Dr. Delgado. Would you like to come up? Thank you so much. I'll move out of the light so you can see me. Well, this is my first opportunity to join this event, and I wasn't going to miss it for the world. I'm so excited that this is going to continue, that this is a program that is an integral part of what Farmington Public Schools is about. You are part of our community, your children attend our schools, and this is something that uh, we are very, very proud of. It's a point of pride to not only work with you from a linguistic standpoint, but with citizenship classes, as well as to have you present. I don't know if uh, many of us would be comfortable trying to present uh, in, an, in another language, and you should be very, very proud of yourselves for uh, all of those presentations. So on behalf of the school district, thank you so much for being here today, and happy Thanksgiving. Are we ready? Okay, at this time, this is when we would start putting on my holiday pounds early with all your wonderful food. But we still have some more um, safer um, things to partake in. We have pizza and subs for you. And then we're going to have our brief intermission and then we'll pick up after that with our online presentations. But thank you so much during our transition and now you can go ahead and help yourselves. So if you could please. Um, pay attention to the screen, and that is where our next students will be found. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Jasmine. I am from Mexico. Today I will talk about Los Voladores de Papantla. Did you know that humans can become birds? A long time ago, there was a severe drought that brought hunger to the Totonac people in Veracruz, in southern Mexico. To end the drought, the wise old men created a ceremony to send a message to the gods of the four cardinal directions. The ceremony reenacts the chosen five boys who went into the forest to ask Mother Earth for permission to cut down the largest tree so they can use it to reach the sky. One of the boys climbs to the top, dancing and playing the drum, while the other four wind in a rope to make 13 turns each and fly like birds in four different directions from the sky spiritual world to the ground. After this, the rainstorms began so this ceremony is done every year to bring fertility to the Mexican lands. With the coming of the rain, the crops begin to grow, and one of the main crops grown is corn, which is used to make a delicious soup. The tortilla soup is made from fried corn tortilla strips that are deep in a broad of ground tomatoes with garlic and onion, sazoned with parsley and ground chili peppers, served with pieces of pasilla chili, chicharrón, avocado, cheese, and cream. Come visit Mexico during June and enjoy our wonderful soup, but don't forget to bring an umbrella. Thank you for watching and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Miriam Montoya. I'm from Veracruz, Mexico. Today, I'm going to tell about the tree of Tule. This magnificent tree is located in the church grounds and the town of Santa Maria Tule in the southern Mexican state of Oaxaca. Local Zapotec legend says that it was planned about 200 years ago by Pechocha, a priest of the good, the Aztec school called Ejecalt, the Aztec green good. Move your slides. Now, yeah. This tree is one of the oldest and largest in the world and has the widest circumference measuring from 137 feet to over 170 feet. In fact, the trunk is so wide that as many as 30 or possible even 50 people can fit inside the opening in the trunk at one time. And although it looks many trees are growing in the same spot, modern tree DNA tests confirm that the tulip tree is in fact one single tree. Its northern trunk and branches have taken different forms and with little imagination, you may be able to see some figures in there, such as the faces of the globins, monsters and elephants, the lions, jaguars, crocodiles, and other creatures. Another magnificent thing you will find in Mexico is the cacao tree and the one of a kind unit Oaxaca chocolate, which is made from the fruit of the cacao tree. The Oaxacans drink chocolate at an hour of the day and this is special and traditional also plays a role on their ceremonies and rituals, including births, weddings, and funerals. Hot chocolate has been prepared for millennia the science name Theobrahma Cacao translate into food of the goods. So whether you are interested in seeing or as to the tree of Georgia the next time you are in Mexico, give thanks for all you have in your life.
advance your slides and stop Miriam. My computer is freezing, but can you just stop? Yes. Javier, you're next. Good morning. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some of my tradition of my home state, Puebla. Uh, good morning. I am Javier Sanchez and I, I am from Puebla. Puebla is in East Central Mexico, which is located in North America. Today I want to share the information about a uh, tradition of my state, the Carnival <coughs> of Huejotzingo in Puebla. The Carnival of Huejotzingo is one of a kind and one of the most important in Mexico. During Carnival, there are military reenactment of a battle that show how a small Mexican army defeated French colonizers to restore our country to independence. The actor engaged in mock battles with hand carved musket, a lot of gunpowder and colorful customs and music. These are places that you need to visit because it was beautiful and there you can taste some of some of our typical foods. These are some of our foods and drinks, mole poblano and rompope. Both are delicious. If you visit Puebla, you need to taste it. If you come to visit Puebla, you will not regret it. Have a very nice Thanksgiving day. Good morning, my name is Sandra Serrano. I am from Chihuahua, Mexico in Latin America. In Mexico, there is a unique land feature called cenotes. Cenotes are a natural sinkhole which are fed by rain filtering through the land and by the currents of underground rivers that are born in the heart of the earth. In ancient times, cenotes were quite significant to the Mayas as it was their main water source and also considered to be the entrance to the Chibalba or the underworld. Cenotes became sacred sites where offerings and rituals were performed to please the Mayan gods. And jade, pottery, gold, and incense have been discovered at the bottom of sacred cenotes along with human remains. Presently, there are over 6,000 cenotes in the Yucatan Peninsula, and some are just a short drive away from Cancun, Playa del Carmen, or Cozumel. Cenotes have both fresh and salt water. The water is very clear and cold, and is a refreshing place to swim or go snorkeling on a hot day. But don't forget to pick up a life jacket at the entrance to these swimming sinkholes as they can be over 15 meters or 49 feet deep or more. If you are visiting a, visiting a cenote, I will invite you to stop at a food stand along the way to enjoy a gordita where you will have a large variety of regional savory and sweet gorditas to choose from. Gorditas are thick tortillas made from masa corn or wheat flour and stuffed with a variety of ingredients such as meat, cheese, beans, or other fillings, and served with bread or green salsa. On your next visit to Mexico, I hope to get to visit Asenote, and if you can wait to visit Mexico for a gordita, you can find one at a local Mexican restaurant, as their popularity has spread all over the world. Thank you for your attention and happy Thanksgiving. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maribel Vasquez. I'm from Saltillo, Coahuila. 
Mexico. Mexico is located between the USA and Central America. Today, I'll talk about ecotourism in Mexico. Mexico offers a lot of option, options for tourism. There are eight different regions and each offers varied activities for visitors. If you like outdoor activities like diving, hiking, or if you simply enjoy nature, you can find hot springs, canyons, caverns, deserts, beaches, and more. Or if you love culture, food, and historical places, Mexico has a beautiful program called Pueblos Magicos. The main idea of this program is to help you discover small communities where you can enjoy local traditions and know and beautiful places and delicious food. Visitors will also taste great food in Mexico. A typical dish of the North region is asado de puerco or guajillo pork stew. It has two main ingredients, pork meat and dried chiles. Chiles are used to prepare a sauce and mix with garlic, cumin, and oregano. It was created during the Mexican Revolution and is widely used in weddings in rural communities of my country. This dish is also known as asado de boda or wedding stew. Chile Colorado, asado zacatecano, all based on which northern state you live in. In Mexico, each region has its own hiding gems and variety of ecotourism options, which makes Mexico a true vacation destination. Thank you for your attention and Feliz Día de Acción de Gracias. Unmute Soledad. Click your three dots. Ready. Good morning and welcome to our Thanksgiving celebration. I am Soledad Tortolero and I am from Venezuela, which is the located in the Northern South America. It is bordered by the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean to the north, Colombia to the west, Brazil to the south, and Guyana to the east. One of the natural attractions in my country is the Catatumbo lightning phenomenon or relampago del Catatumbo and was recognized by the Guinness World Records in 2014 and having the world highest average number of lightning bolts per square kilometer per year. This atmospheric pressure phenomenon generally takes place from April to November and can be seen more than 80% of the year. This lightning is a result of a massive storm cloud blowing across the lake and the sampling boat area where the Catatumbo River and the Lake Maracaibo meet. If you want to see this spectacular lightning display, you can visit the small town of Ologa. It is a small village built on the stilt in the middle of the Lake Maracaibo. And something else unique to Venezuela that you will want to see is our traditional dish, Christmas ham bread, also called pan de jamón, and is made with love and by the whole family. It is savory rolled bread that is the main food found on Venezuela tables during the December holiday in season, giving the family the opportunity to share and enjoy a delicious dish during this celebration. 
to make this hundred, check out of the following website or link for ingredients, bread filling, and the directions on how to make it. Thank you for your attention. Gracias por su atención. Bienvenidos a Venezuela. Welcome to Venezuela and enjoy Thanksgiving with your family. May Borm. I presenting this for Caroline. She is not able to be here today. I am Caroline. I am from France in Western Europe. My hometown is Lyon, the third largest city in France. It's a wonderful place to visit. Lyon is a UNESCO, United Nations Educational, scientific and cultural organization, World Heritage Site. It's known for its architecture and historical sites. You can take a walk around Vieux uh, Lyon, the old city. Visit the Basilica of Notre Dame de Fourvière. Lyon is also famous for its Festival of Lights. It takes place every December 5th through 8th. Originally, it was for the Catholic people to show their gratitude to Mary, Mother of Jesus. The people of Lyon have put candles in their windows since 1852. Now, all the city is illuminated. During these four evenings, with the <laughs> help of different artists, Lyon is known as well as the capital of gastronomy, where food and culture meet. You can find so many different uh, foods, which you can taste in many traditional restaurants called Bouchon Lyonnais, or in hundred-year-old brasserie like the Brasserie Georges. For example, you can try the salad lyonnaise made with lettuce, smoky bacon, gruton, and poached egg, or the regional flavor cannelle lyonnaise, plain or pie flavor. Then try Saint Marcelin cheese with a piece of fresh bread and finish with a cup of coffee or tea or and uh, some sweet. Uh, Cousin de Lyon, a dessert made with a chocolate ganache filling, goated in almond paste, and flavored with curacao. Lyon is a place where all your senses are engaged. You are welcome to visit my hometown, and I assure you, you won't be disappointed. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Hi, my name is Antoine Samaan. I am from Lebanon, which is located in the Middle East in the, on, on the Asian continent. Lebanon is a small country, but it has beautiful places to visit and awesome culture. Three main tourist attractions include religious places and landmark. The first attraction, Our Lady of Lebanon, the Virgin Mary, is a large shrine in the Middle East. It was built in 1907. Second, the Holy Kadisha Valley has been a part of the Christian tradition for millennia. Monks live there to this day. It's also called the Valley of the Saints due to the fact 
some of the monks who lived and died there were later canonized by Catholic popes. Third, the Rauche Rock, also known as the Pigeon Rock, is a very famous landmark in the capital city of Beirut that stands 60 meters or about 197 feet high. Another attraction of Lebanon is a food. One such food is fatouche, which is a famous and the popular Lebanese salad. It is a tasty, healthy dish, rich in multiple vitamins, is low in fat and calorie. The ingredients include parsley, onions, tomatoes, cucumber, Roman lattice, salt and pepper, grand sumac available in Middle Eastern markets, lemon juice fresh, green pepper, olive oil, and pita bread. Mix the ingredients together and enjoy. It is delicious and I recommend that you try it. Lebanon has many beautiful places to visit. Tourists can spend time exploring its culture and nature and enjoy some of the fantastic food Lebanon has to offer. Happy Thanksgiving, Eid Shaker Saeed. Good morning, everyone. I can't see your presentation. <clears throat> you can see? Yes, but we also see your notes, so start your presentation. Yes, uh, hello, my name is Mace al Alawi. I am from Baghdad, Iraq, which was known in, in ancient times as Somar, and Iraq is located in Asia continent. The clothes in Iraq vary from one region to another. The ancient Sumerian custom uh, in one of the reviews The ancient Sumerian dress women still traditionally wear co consent of a beer which they begin to wear after their first, first menstrual period and a dark robe called an abaya. This can also be decorated with antique designs. Men wear a long white robe called jijdasha with a yashma, which is a cloth that covers both the head and the neck. For most celebration, women of Iraq wear a long black and gold color Hashmi dress with long sleeves. The dress also comes in other colors such as red and gold is uh, typically a cuban with jewelry such as earring, necklace, and head pieces. Like other, like other clothing, our food dishes were also created a long time ago. A favorite traditional food is biryani. The ingredient is rice with chicken or meat with some vegetables, spice, and nuts. When you visit Iraq, I hope you enjoy seeing our beautiful clothes and enjoy some delicious food. Thank you.
Nena, you are mute. Hey, Zainab, brother. I am from Iraq. Welcome to my country. Iraq is located in Middle East in southwestern Asia. Iraq has an ancient clo uh, culture which includes features such as education, singing, ancient clothing, and tasty food. Al Mustan Surya University, built in the capital city of Baghdad in 1227 CE, Al Mustan Surya University taught many different subjects, including medication, mathematics, philosophy, and Islamic law. There are 53 types of Maqam Iraqi music, start from generous spinning the 8th to 13th centuries until now. The kilt was the fashion of the ancient Iraqi women in the Sumerian civilization during the 3000 BC. There are famous food in our country. One of the Iraqi tasty food is a type of Iraqi kubba named kubba halab that you can find it any Iraqi restaurant, both inside and outside of Iraq. It's, the, it's made with boiled rice with minced, minced um, meat mixed with onion, salt, and spice. When you visit Iraq, we hope you enjoy and learning more about our Asian civilization and make sure to try our Kuba. Happy Thanksgiving. Eid al-Shukr, everyone. Thank you so much. Namaste, good morning. I am Rohini Sonone. I am from India, which is located in South Asia. If you are a fan of historical architecture and loves to explore the past, the magnificent forts of Northern India would be a treat for you. The top three forts in India that you must visit include the Mehrangad Fort, the Gwalior Fort, and the Red Fort. The Mehrangad Fort, built around 1459, is one of the largest forts in India. It covers about 1,200 acres in northeastern India in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. The fort is built on a hilltop and rises above the surrounding plain about 122 meters or 400 feet high. The 10th century Gwalior Fort is a hill fort located in central northern India near Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh, India. This long narrow fort is one of the most magnificent monuments you can visit. The present day fort is now an archaeological museum but retains the original two main palaces and the defensive structure. The Red Fort, about a six-hour drive north of Gwalior Fort in Delhi, is named for its color. It is one of the most important forts in India as the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, first raised the Indian flag above its Lahori Gate on India's Independence Day, August 15, 1947. This flag raising is an annual event every year on India's Independence Day, August 15, when the Prime Minister broadcast a natural speech from there. Along with its ports, tourists can also enjoy a variety of ports in India. One of these ports is Vada Pao. Vada Pao, also called a Bombay burger, is a unique vegetarian fast food dish. It is similar to an American burger in that a bread bun is used on the top and bottom, but in the middle, there is a deep fried potato dumpling instead of meat. The bun or pao is then cut almost in half for ease in eating. It is generally garnished with a green chili paper and one or more sauces called chutneys. 
So whether you want to see something old like our course or try something new like our Bada Pav, come visit India on your next trip. You will enjoy visiting our country. Thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Sarvana Thanksgiving. Just a bit. Thank you. <laughs>
to prepare these side dish you first need to soak the rice overnight then the following morning you put them the pressure cooker for 78 tea missiles and the, after that you add sugar cardamom powder and coconut and ghee the rice will be dark black in color but will turn purple when fully cooked so if you visit south india be sure to enjoy the bowl of black rice while you tour the unique feature of our city thank you nandri have a happy thanksgiving Hello everybody my name is Shilpa Pancholi and I am from India which is located in South Asia there are many amazing wonders in India but the statue of unity tops them all the statue of unity is a colossal statue of the indian independence activist and home minister vallabhbhai patel located in the state of gujarat india the statue of unity is the world's tallest statue with a height of 182 meters whereas in comparison the statue of liberty in the us is only 93 meters tall the statue is divided into five section but only the first three are open to the public in zone 1 which goes up to his sins you will find the exhibit floor zone 2 goes up his thighs and when you can reach the observation deck located on zone 3 at 153 meters in the air the entry fee to get to see the amazing view that spread out for mile is indian rupees 350 and this price included entry to the observation deck and audio visual gallery about 10000 people a day come to see this architectural wonder The statue has also been included in the Shanghai Corporation Organization 8 Wonder of SEO list. If the of all this walking and standing in lines makes you hungry, a famous traditional Gujarati food that can be found near the statue is khandvi, also known as patuli. Kandvi is so delicious that you will never want to stop eating this tasty snack. Is it a cooked dough that is tightly rolled and cut into bite-sized pieces? It is yellowish in a color and made from mix of gram flour and buttermilk, then seasoned with sesame seeds and other spices. I hope you enjoy your visit to the statue and be sure to stop and taste khandvi. Thanks for listening everyone. You all have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Suko. Um, 
my name is Asuko Nakamura, and I'm from Japan, which is located on the continent of Asia. One of the great things about being a student in Japan is a school lunch. Why do Japanese school lunches gain attention all over the world? First, for growing children, it provides a rich, naturally balanced diet and famous uh, desirable eating habit. Next, the menu is nutritionally balanced based on washok. Washok is a meal that combines rice, soup, pickles, and side dishes. Furthermore, seasonal fruits are incorporated, uh, such as a fresh mung and chestnut, Japanese oranges call it mikan. You can feel the changing seeds through school lunch. In this way, Japanese school lunch is not just meal time. It helps students learn about food education in a fun and natural way through lunch time. My favorite school, uh, my favorite three school lunch menu is include onion soup, curry rice, uh, and yakisoba noodles. If you want to experience just how tasty a Japanese lunch can be, visit a local Japanese restaurant and order the set meal of rice, miso soup, and either meat or fish, along with side dishes of vegetables and pickles, and you will enjoy what students in Japan every day. Uh, thank you for listening. Oh, sorry. Uh, my name is Mai Suzuki. I'm from Japan. In Japan, we have hot springs called onsen. As a volcanically active country, we have many hot springs all over Japan. There are many types of onsens, including outdoor and indoor baths. Hot springs water contains minerals and chemicals, and Japanese people believe that the, taking a hot spring bath is good for their uh, health. There are some rules in order to enjoy onsens. We should wash thoroughly before entering the hot water. If you don't want to enjoy a public onsen, you can choose a private onsen, which is often provided by a hotel. When my family and I stay at a hotel and relax in the onsen, we also enjoy Japanese food called washoku. One traditional Japanese food we eat is natto, or fermented soybeans. I know this food does not look delicious because it's stringy, gooey, and it has a distinctive smell. However, most Japanese people, especially those in the Eastern region, love it. Uh, we eat natto with rice, bread, and noodles. There are many types and variations of it. Natto contains plenty of protein, vitamin K, and fiber. It is said that natto is good for our health. So if you visit our country, plan to have a refreshing time in an onsen and perhaps follow it by a dinner of natto. Uh, thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving.
Okay, we have one more student, uh, Mr. Reese, who has not presented. And Nora, would you like to do so now? Okay. Hello. Hello. My name is uh, Noura Al Jabari. I was born in Iraq. Iraq is located on the continent of Asia. In Iraq, there are many beautiful waterfalls, including the Galia Ali Beg waterfall, one of the most famous waterfalls in northern Iraq. It descends from the high, highest mountains and visited and is visited by thousands of people during of year. The Bihal waterfall is one of most what, uh, wonderful waterfalls in of uh, in the city of Arbil in northern Iraq. Is the uh, it is the only waterfall in the country uh, that depend depend on groundwater. The Siba waterfall located in the city of Dhok, northern Iraq, visited by people from all over Iraq during the summer, spring and summer. Besides the waterfalls, my country uh, also famous for its uh, delicious dishes that contain fresh meat. One of my favorite food is kebab, which are eaten for lunch, dinner, and barbecue. We, uh, we grow kebabs either over charcoal on, on the oven. There are two types of kebabs, beef kebabs and chicken kebab. To make First, you cut uh, the meat into small pieces. Next, uh, add, onion, uh, add onion, parsley, some spices, black, uh, black pepper, and salt. And last, you mix it all together, grill, and serve with the uh, grill vegetables. When you visit Iraq, make sure to stop in at one of the restaurants in the city of Arbil with a view of waterfalls to enjoy the best kebab while watching the waterfall. Thank you. Okay, thank you online students and uh, some who are in person. We are done, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Pat. All right, everyone, we truly appreciate your participation and being here. Um, I wanted to acknowledge, before we bring our young people on, I want to acknowledge another school board member. We have Mrs. Angie Smith, you mind standing up? And then now, the moment we've been waiting for, we have our daycare participants to our program. They're going to come here now.
microphone was just picking my phone. I hear lots of screaming. Beautiful, beautiful. So that will conclude our event for today. We truly appreciate everyone for coming here and spending some great time with us. And thank you so much for sharing so much about your country to us. We truly appreciate it. And we feel even closer as a family here at Farmington Central. Have a wonderful holiday.